Hey guys, what you'll see before you is a list that recently came third place in an MTGO Legacy Challenge piloted by the user Muffers Van Gogh. The vigilant amongst you will be aware that uh, I have featured lists from this player uh, on the channel in the past. They are probably the most uh, successful um, player in MTGO Legacy Challenges playing Dredge, uh, standard LED Dredge, but recently they have been working on this list, which uh, is notable for the fact that it does not run any reserved list cards. Uh, it eschews Lion's Eye Diamond and in exchange uh, goes for Otherworldly Gaze. I would say is the is the card that the list picks up uh, in exchange for that. Uh, it also has managed to shove four griefs into the list, um, and part of the reason for the otherworldly gaze is uh, for those that are not aware. Uh, I will explain what otherworldly gaze is. Uh, otherworldly gaze is a card which is an instant for blue, and uh, it lets you look at the top three cards of your library and put any number of them into your graveyard and the rest on the top of your library in uh, any order. Why has it moved that? Um, yeah, look at the top three cards of your library, put them into your graveyard in any order, put the rest back on the top of your library in any order and it has flashback for one and a blue. So this is interesting because it's a card that uh, starts off your dredges, one at instant speed, and two doesn't require having a dredger in hand. Other effects like looting and careful study require you to obviously have a dredger in hand. This can dig for a dredger and put it in the graveyard in one card, um, which is obviously nice. Um, and it also enables you to play Force of Will out of the sideboard because if you look with the full playset of Careful Study, the full playset of Otherworldly Gaze, four Narcomoebus, and three Breakthroughs, you're looking at a blue count of 15 blue cards plus three blue cards in the sideboard, um, which is for a combo deck more than enough blue cards to uh, enable Force of Will in the board. Um, this list, uh, according to the creator, plays a m slightly slower game, but it's better at grinding, um, and it's more of an almost control -y kind of list in the sense that you can sort of sculpt your draws and find the correct answers with otherworldly gaze and the correct cards to beat through hate pieces and um, counter magic uh, thanks to otherworldly gaze representing potentially two cards that need to be countered by the opponent. Um, let's look at some individual card choices. The mana base is 13 lands which is the same as what you'd expect however in exchange for having say a third city of brass or gemstone mine we have one copy of fiery islet um, which isn't a crazy thing it's been done before um, and you can kind of get away with it because the only black cards that are enablers are Cabal Therapy. There's no Putridimp. You've got the full four careful studies, again, to enable Force of Will. And also you can get away with this because we have four griefs to up the black creature count. Uh, four Otherworldly Gaze, which I've mentioned before. It's a nice card to start off your dredge chains. Um, it lacks the explosiveness of Lion's Eye Diamond. But the fact that it can dig and it can flashback can be nice in certain situations, particularly against blue control decks. Um, it has four Cabal Therapies. It has four Faithless Lootings. All of this is very standard. It has four Narc uh, It has three Golgari Thugs, which is less dredges than normal, but obviously you are much more enabler dense than a normal list uh, because this, this will dig more. Um, 
and also the studies dig more than the normal two or three putrid and two study split. Um, only three Icarids, four Griefs. Um, Grief is a card which I think is quite interesting in Dredge. Um, if you'd like to uh, see some other decks that have Grief in Dredge, I uploaded a video before, you should totally check it out. It's a fun, aggressive uh, Dredge build, but this is this is going for a more grindy game plan. We've got one Ox Vagonus. Uh, standard four Grave Trolls, standard Hogak, and three Breakthrough. Um, obviously what sticks out here is three Golgari Thugs. Um, personally, uh, I'm of the opinion that you should be playing the full 12 Dredges whenever possible. However, I can see how you can get away in this list with having just the 11 uh, with the Otherworldly Gazes. And um, I like having the fourth Icarid. I don't think it's required at all times, but I do like having four Icarids normally. Um, but you've got to make some concessions to slot in the four Griefs and the uh, four Gazes and the four Studies. In the sideboard, we've got a playset of Wisp Mares. Uh, and a Chain of Vapor as the Leyline Answers of choice. We have um, two Leyline of Sanctity, which is slightly less than normal. However, it's backed up with three Force of Wills, which is very good against crop rotation decks and endurance decks. Um, a super nice card to have. Can answer Elvish Reclaimer. Uh, can answer Endurance. Can answer crop rotation. It's good against all three of those cards. Um... Three Leyline of the Voids, obviously, uh, having the Forces is nice versus Reanimator, but obviously so is having Ley Lines. One Dread Return and one Ashen Rider as the Dread Return target of choice, all very standard. Um, the Wisp Mares, uh, Mephuz said he liked Wisp Mare right now because there's a lot of Moon Stompy going around. Um, so I can see why you would want to opt for Wisp Mare over something else. Um, personally, I have found that while, yes, there is a lot of um, decks going around like Moon Stompy, there is also a lot of decks with um, Urza's Saga, and they often can have Leyline sometimes, but also they can have um, Urza's Saga for Cage, and in those sort of situations... It is nice to have an answer which can deal with both of those things. But uh, I don't begrudge the Wismare here. I think Wismare is a very nice card. Um, there's a lot of things to love about Wismare. Um, I am not going to get into what I think is wrong with this main deck. Uh, I will leave my criticisms on any of this to the end. Uh, um, I think Muffers Van Gogh has put up some very impressive results with this. They've said that they think uh, they prefer playing with this version of the list than the standard list, um, and they've put up results with it. They've not just came top eight in a challenge. Uh, just from looking, they have came 10th place in a challenge, they've also came 16th place in a challenge, all playing lists very similar to this. Um, but if you do want to see my personal opinion on this list versus the standard list, uh, I will talk about that at the end of the video. Um, I'm going to run this through a league. Prior to this, I have run this deck through five leagues to get a feel for it. Um, I'm not going to claim to be an expert at this list. Um, Mephuz Van Gogh has said they've played over 100 matches with this list. Hopefully I can demonstrate that um, while this uh, list lacks the explosiveness of the standard LED dredge list, it can definitely still win games. And it's 100% better than Manorless Dredge, which I think is unplayable. Uh, anybody who comes and asks me if they should be playing Manorless Dredge, 
because they can't afford Lion's Eye Diamonds, I tell them no, you should just play Mana Dredge without Lion's Eye Diamond because Mana Lists just can't win games thanks to a, a combination of the London Mulligan um, and then now Endurance as well. I haven't really had a good solid Lion's Eye Diamond List list to point people towards so I'm very happy that they have created this list. And uh, yeah, let's run it through a league and see how it goes. As I said, if you want to know my opinions in detail on this list versus the Lion's Eye Diamond variant, I will talk about that at the end of the video. Um, so feel free to skip to the end if that's what you're interested in. Um, round one, we are against Hybrid 7. We have opened a very good hand uh, with grief protection for our careful study and then a breakthrough for turn two. Uh, oh, this is the. Um, I believe this is the. See, uh, I believe this is the Hammer Time list that recently top eighted a challenge, and it's got like four cages in the board, which is super annoying because we do not have any nature's claims. Um, so this is one of the weird situations that comes up with this list where you're in a situation where you cook, you're you kind of incentivized to cast Otherworldly Gaze because obviously Otherworldly Gaze doesn't dredge. But if you miss on a dredger off of Otherworldly Gaze, you're kind of missing out on a dredge. Um, I'm going to opt to careful study first. Hopefully I don't get spell pierced or something stupid. Um, I'm... Careful studying first so that I can uh, potentially um, draw into a bridge from below and also so that they get their Esper Sentinel trigger. And now I'm trying to think if I want to dis pitch the otherworldly gaze um, so that we can have access to two griefs. I think I think I do. I think I do. Pitching Icarid kind of sucks here because we only have three in the deck, but I believe that's correct. Um, okay, that's a fine play because it means that next turn we can just Cabal Therapy ourselves if we don't find another Grave Troll. Uh, that's a pretty good draw from them. Retrofit a Foundry. That is a um, frustrating card because it can sacrifice Thopters to make um, uh, Construct Tokens which will exile our bridges. Um, but we have quite a bit going on here so I'm not super concerned. Um, you might see me stop dredging. Uh, maybe, maybe I shouldn't have given them a draw here. Maybe I should have just cast breakthrough. Kind of just want to dredge as much as possible. But then again, with the retrofit foundry and play, it kind of disincentivizes me from dredging as much as possible. Yeah, I think maybe I would have been better just casting Breakthrough and paying the one on the, um... Hmm, hopefully we don't hit another bridge. Perfect, we did not hit another bridge. Um, you'll see we have the Breakthrough bug still well and truly in effect on Magic the Gathering Online. Um... I expect we will get Retrofer Foundry sack the Thopter. Okay, no we didn't. That's good. Our opponent seemingly unaware. What is the worst card they can have? Stoneforge? It's probably not actually the worst card they can have. But it's all I can think of. Oh, Sigarda's Aid's obviously a bad card. I don't want them to have that.
Okay, so we'd have been in a pretty bad spot if our opponent had actually known what to do with the Retrofitter Foundry. Um, okay, that's just an interesting choice by my opponent. Um, I'm just going to take the one in fact here. Reason being, I want a flying blocker for next turn potentially. Maybe it was better not to swing this turn, just make more zombies, but I feel like we kind of have to do something here. Hopefully we hit Hogak off of this box. We don't have many dredges left in deck. Uh, thug. Uh. Sting, we don't. Okay, that's good, thug. We've got to sack this, sadly, which will give them a draw, but it is, in the grand scheme of things, not the end of the world. Uh, what is it? Colossal. Um, what is it called? Sorry, I need to look up what the flipping card's called. Uh, uh. Oh, I don't want them to draw lion sash actually, I think I'll name that. Oh, it's Stoneforge Mystic. Oh, the good thing is I can name Stoneforge Mystic. Maybe I should have just named Stoneforge Mystic again, but in the grand scheme of things it didn't matter. Especially, um, maybe attacking there and losing a bridge was bad. It's kind of hard to tell with the Ink Moth Nexuses. I don't want something bad to happen. That's not good. That's going to represent a very big token next turn. So I need to do something pretty quick, I think. I think I just need to keep shoving. Um, he can, he can chomp my Hogak with the Construct plus the Smith. Or they can chump ox, construct, thing, thing, take like 10. I'm going to leave the Narcomoeba 
on blocks, I think. Does it matter? Does it force some blocks if I swing with an Archibiba that otherwise don't happen? If they choose to block there, there instead of the ox. My only concern is that I swing in and then I die on the crack back. What is this that needs to sack a thopter? Yeah, it's to sacrifice a thopter. Um, sorry, the combat math is complicated here. Um, I swing, they trade with the ox. They chump the Hogak, chump the Ox, block an Icarid, keep the Construct round, block an Icarid, take 10. I don't think there's anything wrong with swinging with an Archimedia, so I'm just going to do it. I could be wrong. But I think this just forces uh, a few more blocks. Maybe it doesn't make any difference. It's really hard to tell when you've got lots of different powers of creatures. Um, I don't think you can get away with blocking like this. No, you definitely can't get away with blocking like this. Well, huh? This is lethal. Why, why do this? I mean, okay. I mean, they, they had blocks there that would keep them alive, but those weren't, weren't it. Um, yeah, so this list that top aided the challenge has three Graf Digger's Cage in the sideboard. Uh, we don't have a clean answer to Graf Digger's Cage. And three cages, not a normal number of cages. Um, so when you side in Force of Will, Breakthrough becomes pretty bad because Force of Will and Breakthrough conflict a little in that you don't really ever want to cast breakthrough when you've got a force in hand because you need to cast breakthrough x's two in order to be left with force plus blue card in hand um, even though it is a blue card that can pitch to force weirdly enough faithless looting is a medium card and B grief loses some of its power on the the draw and the, hilariously faithless looting i find is actually worse in this list than careful study because it doesn't pitch to force you don't have lion's eye diamond to flash it back and um you uh don't have uh, you can't cast it off of cephalid coliseum like you can careful study so a lot of the times when you want to trim either study or looting you tend to go with looting first um, I could bring in Rider and Dread Return. It's not terrible in this matchup, I don't think, but it's a bit hard to fit the slots in. I think I'm just going to run it back like this. Um, I'm fairly confident we can win a game. Um, just running it back like this, I could be wrong. I mean, this hand isn't atrocious, but we can't really use this force of will and pitch it to this careful study, because if we do, then uh, the force won't work, so it's kind of a dead card. Um, 
Um, study plus thug doesn't actually trigger Cephalid Coliseum for the next turn. Maybe maybe mulliganing this is actually greedy. Maybe we just keep this. I'll keep it. It's got dredges and blue and, and enablers. Two enablers is less than I want, but this isn't a deck that's going to be wastelanding me. It's also not a deck that's going to be... Um, it's also not a deck that's going to be countering me so I can kind of get away with this also if they do something like this where they mulligan to four um, trying to look for a graph digger's cage we can just pitch this to the cage if needs be uh, sorry pitch this to counter cage if needs be and what do you know I, I am countering this because it, we're more likely to draw something there we go uh, that's pretty awesome I'm not going to cast it just yet because uh, I want to not give my opponent any info. Um, awesome. Do I wish to? Yeah, I think I do not wish to draw this because if I do it, I can't do anything with my extra mana and I can just flashback gaze anyway so I'm just going to put this in the graveyard I don't really gain anything from drawing it, I'd rather draw a different card um, I pass the turn here my concern is that this saga is going to go off in two turns and find them another cage. So I need to get something going pretty quick. Hopefully we can find a dredger here. Um, we do find a dredger, which is super nice. Sadly, we only have six cards in graveyard right now. We did find another dredger, so a dredge change of a brick. We really need to not brick on dredges, or at least if we do brick on dredges, we need to um, draw another enabler. But we don't brick on dredges, which is nice. However, what's not nice is the fact that we have not hit a single careful study and our opponent's going to find another cage off of this Urza Saga. At which point this game's going to become quite difficult. However, it's not impossible that we win here. We've got castable cards in hand. Um, we could always do the block with thug put hogak on top of deck trick which is works more times than you care to admit okay they do not grab another cage i i don't know why i mean i know they can exile our bridges with um cabal therapy but i'm not sorry with cabal therapy with retrofit a foundry uh, finding a third one of those there kind of sucks they're gonna sack the foundry here which really sucks maybe I should have kept the Icarid around actually in case we hit Hogak um, oh, Shadow Spear is a problematic card yeah, I mean, we were in a sort of awkward situation there because we had to find a Cabal Therapy to proc the bridge. I mean, we could have just gone to end step, but playing the long game versus this deck doesn't seem very good to me. They've got a lot of powerful... Uh, I really need to find the other bridge here. Hmm. 
Hmm. Maybe I went too deep there. I worry if we're able to win the game if we uh, don't have access to. Uh, if, if we if we just run out of cards in our graveyard, basically. Um, this is the first time I've played against this deck, so this is a learning experience for me right now. I know this is a deck in modern, however. Oh my god, I was supposed to cast Hogak again, that's actually really bad. I think we actually do lose the game there. I misclicked and clicked OK instead of casting Hogak again. I think that will probably cost us the game, I expect. Um... Uh, maybe we can just make a bunch of maybe we can just go super wide I kind of like that idea actually just, just missing off a turn of attacking and just like getting loads of zombies in play I think that's pretty good actually I didn't attack with Narcomoeba there because they could animate Ink Vault Nexus and block. Obviously they get a servo for me not doing that, but I think that's okay. Uh, obviously their constructs are getting bigger, however they're still currently smaller than Hogak, which is fine. Um, I need to be concerned about the backswing here. I can't swing out completely. I need to leave some blockers up. I think I do this. They can sack their server and make a thopter so they don't lose, so they don't give me more bridges. Okay, they're animating it with Nexus instead. I'm okay with that. I mean, if you block there, you give me an extra zombie versus blocking the zombie token. <clears throat> I think blocking the zombie token is correct. Yes. They're actually doing the math here and seeing if they're dead. These blocks will put them to one. Oh, maybe I should have swung with the zombie to force blocks elsewhere What was the point of animating the end of Moth Nexus if you're not going to block with it? Oh, so you can do that? But I mean, you could have done that anyway. I think we win now. They need like Shadow Spear to stay alive, I believe. It'd be nice if we could win with zero cards in deck, that's always fun. Uh, 
Best Icarid on the bomb. You love to see it. Did we bottom that Icarid? No, we kept the seven. Yeah, there we go. Whew. Jeez. That's a tougher matchup than it should be on paper. I feel like the game was just over if they fetched up Saga with the... Um, uh, fetched up another cage with the Saga. But maybe maybe they didn't net deck the same list. Maybe there's only one cage in their, in their board. Maybe that's not the exact 75 that won the challenge. Um, not won. Top 8 of the challenge. Um, but yeah, clean 2-0. Zero cards left in deck. You love to see it. Oh, sorry. I didn't recall my opening hand. It had um, one land, a bunch of dredges, and uh, no enablers. So I mulliganed it. This is my 6. Which I think I will actually keep. Uh, the reason I will keep this is 2 lands, 2 cabal therapies. Um, in an LED list I might not keep this. But then again in an LED list I wouldn't have the card Otherworldly Gaze. Otherworldly Gaze digs a lot. And we've got 2 lands on the go. So yeah. I'm going to gaze here. I don't want to get fond and I don't want to get dazed. So, in my mind, this is the correct time to do it. Um, I think I put these two in the graveyard and actually put the grief on top. Mm, no, I'm going to be dredging next turn anyway. I'm just going to dump all of these in the graveyard. Please, no Elvish Reclaimer. Oh. Oh. We get him bogged. We're getting double exploration into Metro Bog. Okay, I mean, our hand could deal with that. Okay, his main phase. If we just do this now, we risk getting wastelanded if we wait. I don't really want to get wastelanded. Also, it would be nice if we could take any. Because uh, of the flipping breakthrough bug, I need to do this. Rotation, Dark Depths and Thespian Stage, okie dokie. We need to find another Dark Amoeba or we die. That's good, we found two Narcobibas and the Ox I was wanting, so that's nice. I don't know what could be in their hand. 
Um, if it was a land, they'd have played it. I think I'm going to name crop rotation. Okay, it's a mox diamond. Um, now it's a case of, do we even want to play this? The, the Probably the biggest concern here is um, the top deck like uh, flipping some way to get tabernacle in play and having lands in play seems more useful for that so I'm just going to pass here I think we were in an okay spot they generally tend not to play um, Sajiri Step. In fact, they almost never play Sajiri Step. I'd be shocked if they had a copy of Sajiri Step in their list. And uh, they don't find the Tabernacle, so we are going to game two. Um, so I'm fairly certain I've got absolutely no idea how to board against this. Let's just preempt this here. Oh, my gut's telling me I want all of these. Um, Again, Breakthrough and Force of all kind of conflict. Force seems good versus Crop Rotation and Endurance. However, it's kind of bad against Urza Saga. Grief loses some of its power on the draw versus on the play. Um, Ox, I actually don't think is a very good versus lands. I think relying on having two lands in play to escape Ox is not very reliable. Uh, looting is worse than study. I don't really want to go down another breakthrough. Maybe it's correct to take the other breakthrough out. I think I'll just trim a gaze. I don't really want to go below that many loot effects. Uh, yeah, I just sort of kept this. It's got Grief, which is good against in crop rotation, so I just sort of kept. It's also got lots of lands, which is nice. Um, I guess I'm going to pitch the Hogak here. I don't really want to. The other option is that I don't, but I think I do want to pitch the Hogak as much as it pains me to do. In before he's just got bog in hand. Oh, I'm getting there in the life. They are going to corrotate for something. There's the Tabernacle, there's Redham Elemental Blast. Okay, okay, we're cooking. I'm going to cast Gaze now to play around getting Red Blasted. And I'm just going to dump all of those in the graveyard because I have two other lands. What did you draw that you're not playing? Kind of spooky. Do I think it's crop rotation? If it's crop rotation, you got me, bro. I think it's endurance. That's what I think it is. OK, 
Okay, it's just wooded foothills they're sandbagging for funsies. I guess there's no reason for them to play it out. We will pay for this zombie token. Um, we want bodies for drug return. I think, yeah, we dredge one less card. We've got them dead. Nine plus four, thirteen. We got them dead unless they got something. If we keep two zombies around. Oh, actually, I should be stacking them like this. I'm lazy on that sometimes. Oh, have we got to exile Ashen Rider in order to try and kill him? I guess I'll do it. Like it's risky, but I don't really see why I wouldn't. Like they could have crop rotation for chasm. It's the only thing that kind of punishes this. Wouldn't have hit job return this turn anyway. We win. A lot of lands lists aren't running chasm anymore. Whew. Okay, wow. Um, grief really showed its strength there. I think this is one of the reasons why grief is a good card in the meta game right now. Um, Yeah, grief was grief was real real nice there. So that was fun. Um, yeah, clean four zero so far. All right, round three against MSE six. This hand is a mulligan, despite the fact that we have griefs. We have one land and one way to discard dredges. You generally when you look for hands you want uh, multiple enablers, this doesn't have that. Now this hand is a keep because it has multiple lands, multiple enablers and uh, uh, yeah My, what I'm thinking about now is do I bottom the gaze and keep the land um, so <coughs> I guess I bottom the land it's close I guess I bottom the land like if if I if the what I'm thinking is what happens if the faithless looting gets countered um and also what happens if I dredge and I don't hit a dredger off the grave troll. I'm fairly certain I'm going to start with looting. This is one of the things I've found with Otherworldly Gaze that's very awkward. Because you really want to cast Gaze before casting other spells. But you get so punished. In 2022 Legacy, if you cast a spell on turn 1. If you're a combo deck, like Dredge or Reanimator, you cast a spell on turn 1 and don't do anything. Like... What, what what are you doing? You're not going to win the game. You you can't against a deck like Delver. You you cannot afford, especially on your turn one play to just to just do nothing. It, 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 you'll lose like 70, 80 percent of your matches if you do that. Um, I'm keeping the gemstone mine over the 
mana confluence. It, it's, it's, it's very, I mean, it, it questionable whether it's better to keep the gemstone mine or the mana confluence. Uh, what the heck? Is this the mirror? Are you serious? No. Come on. I'll have to give up my secrets now. Everybody will have to know. Oh, they're actually playing the the uh, the Lion's Eye Diamond version. We might be, uh, we might not, uh, we might not uh, be, uh, you know, um, winning winning this one. This uh, they are the same deck but faster, is what I would say. Um, uh, I think it's correct to gaze and then break through. I don't see a reason not to gaze and then break through. Like the other options I cast breakthrough X is one, but I don't see what that achieves. Uh, just shove all these in the graveyard. We just want to not brick on dredges off of this breakthrough basically. We might just win here because we went first. We might just win because we went first. And our opponent obviously drew the Lion's Eye Diamond off of the... Oh, that's not very good. Only hitting one knock. Um, I'm going to name Breakthrough. They might have Faithless Looting, but I'm going to name Breakthrough. Okay, I've got to take the careful study as well. They can keep the therapy, I don't care about that. What what could be bad here is if they dredge into... Okay, they hit... Oh, that's really annoying. They're going to take our bridges. It's really unfortunate we didn't hit our Hogak there in the top 40 cards. Um... Because then we'd have just put up an uh, insurmountable board. Wow. Not not exiling our bridges there is uh, game losing, to put it politely. That is uh, not what you want to be doing. The, the 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 secret no one wants to tell you about the dredge mirror is oftentimes the player that wins the matchup is the player whose bridge from blows happen to be in the bottom of their deck because you if you hit lots of them early and you don't hit um and you don't hit a way to uh you don't hit a way to get lots of zombies on board you just lose so, Dredge Mirror is a very screwed up matchup because we both have Ley Lines which just end the game and then Ley Line answers. Um, so obviously these eight come in and then the debate about it is around do you want to be bringing in Force of Will in the matchup? Uh, I'm not too fussed about having Grief. It's not an atrocious card because it can exile Bridge from Below and it can stop them from doing anything crazy on turn one. Um, but on the draw, this matchup's all about Leyline and answering Leyline and Grief doesn't stop them answering Leyline when we're on the draw. Um, you can't cut Hogak. You can get away with trimming a therapy however bridge control is very important in the matchup being able to dictate when bridges get exiled um and uh so for example often you'll want to cabal therapy pre-combat so that you can swing in and then if they block yes you will lose your bridges but they won't get any zombies from it um, is very very powerful so I, I generally tend not to want to go below three copies of uh, Cabal Therapy I actually played against Nafas Van Gogh when I was playing the LED list and uh, they were playing the um, they were playing the the gaze version and they brought in the forces however I'm looking at this like I don't see how I'm going to bring in force of will here um, 
maybe they trimmed all of the cabal therapies i don't especially like that um i'm going to cut two lootings here and i don't maybe it's better to cut gaze maybe looting's just more powerful I, I, i'll trim one of each because i don't really know um i don't want to cut breakthrough because we are already uh, it's, it's nice to have a, a card that can well this is really good if they don't have serenity this is like really unfair opening double ley line when we only have three copies of ley line the odds of that are very uh not that high so we're just going to keep this it, it does it has dredges it has enablers and it's got two ley lines you basically can't it, post board keep a hand in good faith that doesn't either answer a ley line or have a ley line that that's the reality of the matchup post board i think um yeah if you queue into me please don't use all these secrets against me i've been enjoying having like a silly mirror win rate not to boast i think a lot of people that just play this deck on mtgo just don't have much experience in the mirror which is understandable because there aren't many people that play this deck in general um i've got the prettier ley lines so i'm winning the moral victory here I'm going to play out the land. I'm not going to cast Faithless Looting. There's no reason to. There's simply no reason to. Because even if we draw... Even if we loot into the... The... Um, Leyline answer. We aren't going to win. Uh, we aren't going to be able to do anything. Because we have no looting afterwards. Um, I think that's a mistake people often make. Is just firing off the looting. Trying to dig for a... Leyline answer, but they're like, well, what are you going to do after you've dug? Nothing. So you just, you, you like, you're better off just leaving them in hand. Um, I'm I am going to fire off this gaze. I want to find a land for next turn or an answer to leyline. <laughs> yeah, okay. I guess I'll just throw all of those away. I don't want to draw any of those. Kind of sucks to throw away two of our three acrids. Another reason... I mean, I know this is a kind of silly situation, but this is another reason why I'm not a massive fan of... Um, uh, only having two ley lines. Come on, game. With 14 cards deep, we've seen one land. Ah, ugly Nark amoeba. If I see you playing these Nark Amoebas on MTGO, I'm judging you. I'm judging you. I'm judging you real hard. Look. Guilds of Ravnica and Archimiba, 0.03. Future Sight and Archimiba, 0.04. Don't do this to yourself. Don't do this to yourself. Sorry. Oh, that's a good draw. Uh, I'm going to play Stink We Didn't Pair because it's more mana efficient. Yeah, we risk losing more life this way, but um, this game is uh, this game is uh, idiot beatdown until we find the uh, answer to leyline. What are you doing? Casting a whisper. Oh, casting a stink beam. Stink beam being the peak annoying card in the matchup in terms of being a blocker. Oh, okay. I'm very happy that you are doing that because I have lots of creatures that would not be able to swing past that. 
flying out an arc amoeba because it flies. See, my opponent's thrown away all of these lootings. I mean, obviously, we know because they've this far deep that they wouldn't have hit anything of note anyway. Um, I'm going to swing now. Knock them to ten, play a Golgari Thug. Um, like, we know that they've not found an answer to Leyline, but if they had. Oh, oh, that's really good. That's actually nuts. Wismare showing why it's an incredible card. I'm am going to evoke it rather than um, which will probably just prompt a concession I expect stacking the triggers this way because this uh, gets an extra card in graveyard for um, oh <laughs> that's funny uh, gets an extra card in graveyard for uh, threshold Oh, well, don't know if yeah, my microphone can pick up the uh, sounds of the British public from outside, but uh, isn't that wonderful? Uh, I'm going to looting first because that lets me dump a grave troll, which means that the Cephalid Coliseum should be better. And yep, my opponent scoops. Understandable. Um, I mean, we open double ley line. We, we tend not to run cards that answer two ley lines um, because they often cost two mana um, and the other answers are just more versatile. I don't think Serenity is terrible, but I feel like you're often put in situations where... Like, Serenity is obviously very good against the Saga decks and the Moon Stompy decks. And to an extent, it's also good against 8-cast as just a card, even though they don't leyline you. Just if you resolve a Serenity, it's just really hard for them to win. Um, but the fact that it costs 2 mana is often just um, atrocious. I mean, look at that game there. We were stuck on 1 land for so long. If we, if we, if we keep a 1 land hand and we have a Serenity, it's so hard... Like, you're, you're, you're really disincentivized to mull a one land hand with a Serenity in. If it's got zero lands and a Serenity, you, you, you'll obviously mull that. But if you've got, like, Looting, Grave Troll, Serenity, one land, and you're against the Leyline deck, you want to keep that hand. You want to keep that hand every time. But if you go, like, six turns without drawing a second land, you just lose. We're so, we're so heavily all in on functional opening hands because um, we, especially if we're under ley line, we can't just like loot to churn through our deck because we need to rely on finding more lootings and we're just, we're just throwing away resources. Um, so while yes, I, do, I don't hate the card Serenity, um, I could see it as like a one-of. I really don't think um, it's, it's a super good card. Now you could argue if it resolves, it just wins the game, but there's a lot of other decks, like Elves. Elves is a very prominent deck that runs uh, often four ley lines. You can't even get away with, ca even if you've got two lands, you can't get away with casting a Serenity on turn two versus Elves. You're dead. You're dead on turn three. You can't cast Serenity on turn two. You need to answer that ley line turn one, and then go off turn two versus elves or you are losing the game you can't get away with serenity versus elves and i think while elves is one of the more prominent ley line decks in the format i i really dislike two mana ley line answers um i do like ray of revelation but I, ray of revelation isn't specifically there as a ley line answer ray of revelation is there as a uh uh, from the graveyard answer to an Urza saga. Um, yeah. 
one card that is interesting, that is one mana when it needs to be, and also two mana when it needs to be, is um, Kiora's Dismissal. I don't hate the card Kiora's Dismissal. Um, obviously it bounces the card back to their hand, and obviously it only hits Ley Lines. Um, I guess it couldn't hit as a saga as well. Um, but it's not a super uh, versatile card. I'm willing, I'm more willing to lose to getting double ley lined than I am to running a two mana ley line answer. I think you actually win more games from having one mana ley line answers and losing to getting double ley line than having answers that can answer two ley lines. I mean, I could be wrong. That, that's just my feeling. Anyway, uh, so far we are uh, undefeated, which is actually better than any of the leagues that I've run with this deck up until now. Uh, being 2-0, uh, 2-0, um, So hopefully we can continue this. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Okay, round four against Falcon. This hand does not have any dredges and does not have any enablers. It is a mulligan. This hand has one enabler and cabal therapy, which is like a bad enabler. And no dredges. However, it does have two lands. And Cephalic Colosseum. However, I think we can do better. I don't really class Cabal Therapy as an enabler. Like, if we get Force here and Wastelanded, we just lose. Uh, okay, this is this is better, I think. Just about. Um, bottom, Icarid and Grief, and hope to uh, gaze into into a uh, another land that's where I'm at playing around fun yeah yeah I think we upkeep gaze here if we don't get wastelanded no wastelands no wastelands oh it's painter okay What are you going to do? Simeon Spirit Guide. And put that on top. And then we will not draw. Play Gemstone Mine. Faithless Looting. Uh, okay, that's good. We hit that. Well, I'm going to name Goblin Engineer. The reason I named Goblin Engineer is because he's got Goblin Welder in play already, and Goblin Engineer will uh, tutor him anything he needs. Also, if I name like Painter, that's not actually a good play, because he can just Welder the Painter out of the graveyard. Um, Bolt, Saga, Sakenzen, Pyroblast. I will do nothing. I am afraid of the Khan, however... Um, I would rather have a... Uh, would rather have a zombie on the board to pressure the opponent's life total. Grindstone. Okay, so we know their exact hand, so that's nice. I think we can win this game, provided our dredges aren't atrocious. I'm not going to... I don't think he will, but I'm not going to activate this now, just in case he's one of those people that wants to bolt his own... Um, Goblin Welder. I'm gonna swing with. I'm gonna swing with both. I don't think he'll block with the Goblin Welder. I really don't think he'll block with Goblin Welder. If he does, then okay, I'm happy with that. I don't want Goblin Welder on the board. Goblin Welder is uh, a terrifying card for us to deal with. It turns any top decked Goblin Engineer into like an instant. Um, an instant uh, ensnaring bridge or something that we can't beat game one 
So I'm more than happy he decided to trade that. If I was him and he was going to make that trade, I would have blocked the zombie instead of the Icarid. Um, but I'm not going to complain if he wants to play poorly. I am happy with that. Um, I'm going to take their Khan now in case they top deck a... Uh, uh, in case they top deck a soul land, um, then it's just a case of do I want to take the other cards out of their hand? And I think I do. Maybe I should have named Bolt here because now he gets to Bolt a zombie potentially. So if he does that, I get to take his Pyroblast. He's going to take Lightning Bolt. Um, um, I don't think we speed up the clock anymore by swinging, so I'm going to just leave it. Um, even though I've used three of my Cabal Therapy, so the last one will be blind. Um, if you top deck something like, I don't know, Imperial Recruiter, it's nice to have this. Okay, so he drew a mountain for turn. Concede. Okay, good. That's a relief. So in ye olden days, Leyline of Sanctity used to be really good against them because they tended to not be able to beat um, uh, Leyline on white because it would turn off their Tormod's Crypts and it would also turn off them painting you. Um, so it was a very good card. But now with uh, Soul Guide Lantern and Urza Saga um, it's not as good as it used to be. I'm going to bring in a couple of Wisp Mares. The reason for that is that there are um, I will say a bunch of um, and I'm going to trim studies before lootings because of pyroblast um, there are a few lists going around with um, ley line in in fact I'm gonna bring in a third one um, because it also adds adds as, as a saga um, if I was sure that they weren't on ley line I wouldn't bring in the wisp mares but th there are a bunch of lists going around at the moment with ley line in the board um, I kind of like the griefs, so maybe they're bad going second. Maybe we do something a bit cheeky. We do something like two for two. Um, we still got three too many cards. I think I think I really don't like Ox in the just about any matchup with this list. I feel like it's so hard to escape. Um, like when you get to escape it, it's really nice because you don't have loads of velocity because you lack Lion's Eye Diamond, but it just seems like a hard card to escape in this list, so I find myself trimming it a lot. Um, still need to trim two cards. Not really happy with this. I don't want to go down many more enablers. Trim another grief since I got three wisp mares. I'm kind of hedging into ley line more than anything else. So, I mean, this answers ley line, and that's the reason why I bought it in. It also answers saga. So, I think I'm inclined to keep this. It's kind of bad into um, kind of bad into surgical, but hopefully we can top deck something. Um, and it's not atrocious into surgical. Obviously, we got two gold lands after I side out the ox. Um, but I mean if you've got two mana in this deck you can just flashback gazes so it's not the end of the world that to me says we might be getting fast um, painter comboed which we uh, don't really have anything to do I mean I could the Cabal Therapy them naming um, 
painter servant but i mean if they if they don't have it and they just have like like what is our game plan if if we name painter servant they don't have painter servant and they just have like surgical in hand we just we just lose um Um, I think I don't return Narcomoeba here because I want to be able to use the Cephalid Colosseum one of those weird spots I mean I could have I don't know I, I just I just I want to get going you know obviously it's bad if we don't hit another like we could get Khan here. I feel like that's what he has. Like maybe it was just greedy. I should have just um, returned the Narcomy with name Khan. Yeah, this looks like Khan to me. Ugh. Let's hope he sided in this crypt. My guess is they did not. Yeah. Perhaps we should have returned the Narcomoeba and just named Therapy. I don't know. It's tough to say. I think I'm just going to scoop it up here pretty much. Second card. Yeah, I mean, I should definitely have just... Um, gone for... Returning it and name calm. I think when they didn't return anything, turn two there. I think that was the play. Oh, scoop here, because they're just going to combo and kill us. Yeah, maybe that was a bit loose. Maybe that was a bit loose. I don't know. I don't know. It's so hard to know what's going on in these painter hands. Well, I, I'm fairly confident they don't have leyline. Famous last words. Um, so I'm just going to bring the griefs back in. I'm still not a massive fan of ox. I just want to be disruptive. I think I like this. It's got three enablers. Yeah, we don't have a dredger, but... I mean, it's better than nothing. I'm going to do this now to play around Pyroblast. I think I just put that in the graveyard. Opponent kept their seven, which is scary. Petal. Pyroblast probably would be my gut feeling, so I'm going to play around that by not casting breakthrough. Uh, oh my god, that is not good. Please don't call on me. Ah! I hate Goblin Engineer. This game's so hard to win now. They could just Soul Guide Lantern us every turn. I don't see how we win this game. I'm just going to... I don't know. I'll come out therapy than them con, I guess. Uh, well, they didn't have it, but it didn't matter anyway because we bricked on dredges. So, I mean, what were we going to do? Um... Yeah, they can just, they can just, they've got another great furnace in hand. They can literally just uh, soul guide lantern us every turn. Uh, maybe the misplay was game two. We were supposed to just name Khan with the Narcomoeba and not elect not to return it. Um, round five. This sounds good. I'm gonna bottom the therapy. This is this is a an archetypal good hand. So it's got more than one land it's got one two three enablers and the reason i'm 
The reason I'm keeping the second land, the, sorry, the third land over the Cabal Therapy is because if we get Wastelanded, we can't activate this Colosseum without drawing another land off the Careful Study. And I don't want to have to rely on drawing another land off the Careful Study. Uh, I would much rather keep the lands and bottom the Therapy, especially game one, when I don't know what I'm against, and it could be a Wasteland deck. But this is, this is when, when people are like, Oh, should I keep these hands? These are the hands you should be looking for. You should be looking for hands like this. L multiple lands, and then one, two, three enablers. If your hand has three enablers, it's a keep. Almost every time. And by enablers, I mean like Faith is Looting, plus Breakthrough. Multiple Breakthroughs are only enablers if you have another card to pair with them. If your hand's three breakthroughs and two lands, that's not a that's not a keep because the breakthroughs don't do anything on turn one. A lot of people watching this will probably be like, well yeah, that's common sense, but there are a lot of people new to the deck that don't quite understand what actually a keep is. LOL. LOL, as the kids say. I'm laughing. I'm laughing at this merfolk player. Um, you know... I think I keep... I, I think I discard these two and Cabal Therapy. If he wants to sack the Curse Catcher here, I'm fine with it. The reason why I'm fine with it is because... Uh, if I want to make a bunch of zombies, I will have to use a Cabal Therapy anyway, unless I just go to end step. Um, I just want it off the board, basically. Um, and next turn I can pitch Grief to Golgari Thug, provided I dredge into another dredger. The odds of which are pretty good, because we're 14 cards deep. Um... Eat the other Icarid with Icarid. Uh, an Archimeba. Kind of sucks. But. Not the end of the world. But. 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 You got a daze for me, opponent? No. Okay. Uh, let's. Name. What's the other one? Master of the Pearl Trident, is it? Or you want to name True Name? Probably True Name. Doesn't even let me. Okay. Now, what is Merfolk's. Uh, what is Merfolk's sideboard? Um. I know a Merfolk list recently top aided some tournament. Uh, Merfolk. Merfolk. Please. Okay, I can't find this Merfolk list. But my gut feeling is that they are. On cage, multiple cages. However, I don't know for sure. I will bring in some number of force. Um, I don't hate grief. This is a tempo matchup, I don't want loads of breakthroughs. Uh, I will side out one Faith of Sitting. If my sideboarding looks very random, it's because it is. It's because it is. I'm, I'm making it up as I go. 
My thoughts are I want to be able to stop them playing cage on turn one. And that's about it. The chain of vapor is in case they ley line me. I want to pretend I can still win the game. Uh, so here we go, we got multiple lands but we got one enabler. This enabler gets countered, we lose. So I'm not going to keep this hand, I'm going to mulligan it. This car hand has no lands, we mulligan it. Um, oh, Chain of Vapor is an enabler, so we mulligan. Okay, this is an actual keepable hand. Now the question is... Um, the question is... We bottom the second breakthrough for sure. We bottom the mana confluence. Then the question is... Well, I mean... There's a few things you can do here. You definitely bottom breakthrough because two breakthroughs aren't very good. The other, the first option is you bottom that and that, and then if this gets countered, you can follow up with breakthrough X's one next turn. I don't really like that. The other option is you bottom this, this, and this, and you pretend that they don't have any counter spells, and then you lose. Or I think the best thing to do is you bottom this, this, this so in this order because it's actually better to the black creature first and then this I think is the highest chance of winning obviously we don't have a dredger now but hopefully gays can dig us to a dredger and also I'm expecting yeah something like that you know what I mean um, I'm gonna run the looting into the curse catcher um, because Gaze digs harder. Okay. Alright. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that resolving somehow. I feel like you never ever let that resolve ever. Ah, there's the cage I was worried about. Maybe that's why he didn't. I don't think we can win now. That that's happened, but... I'll play it out. I've won, I've won stupider games. Hyas, why are you letting me? Mm. I mean, I'm not winning this game, am I? See, this is this is part of the reason why I, I like having nature's claim at the moment. People are just playing such random stuff, but I mean, on the play, we should have the advantage of uh, you know being able to. Um, make a bit of a mockery of this. This is pretty good as well because it forces out the hearse. I think. 
sure. Oh, I forget there's a cage in play. I can't actually do anything. I was like, oh, well, now we can break through and flip a bunch of Narcomemers, but no, we can't. There's a cage in play. So with that hearse plus the cage, that's pretty much lights out. So I'm going to scoop it up. Um, grief seems a premium in this matchup. Um, force is okay. I don't know, maybe on the, oh, there we go, I'll take out the chain, I don't like the chain, now I know they're not on ley lines, um, we've trimmed a looting and a breakthrough for two forces, I think that's okay, I think that's okay, So what's going on here? We've got one enabler, a Cephalic Coliseum, no real disruption. I mean, we could turn one therapy name cage, but then we don't really have good follow-up. I don't really like it. But maybe we're supposed to keep it given we can't find an LED hand. Um, opponent's mulliganing to five. At 5 is when I start considering keeping hands like this. The problem I have with this is, is I feel like we can get better 4s. Maybe we can't in this list because we don't have LED. What are we actually looking for on a 4? Um, I don't know. I'm not sure at all. Bottom these two I think because I want to turn one gaze. Pray we don't get cage turn one. The opponent's mulliganing very low, so it's not unlikely that we get cage turn one. But we can't we can't go off turn one. Like I'm not ecstatic about keeping this hand. I bottomed the two dredges because my thoughts are well we didn't see surgical for one, but also two I want to lead on gaze. And if I lead on gaze I can maybe sculpt it so I get a second land and then I can um, stink, we don't stink, we don't force. Okay, that's crap, to put it politely. Um, we really wanted a second land. Okay, maybe they've got hearse. If they've got hearse instead of cage, we might be able to win here. If this resolves, I'm going to name unlicensed hearse. Okay. Force pitch force. Don't hearse me, bro. I think we're getting hearsed. Oh, Murphy creature spells. We're not getting hearsed. God bless. God, some uh, choice dredges. I'm not going to swing here because I want to stop him swinging. And this stops them swinging. Vile. Okay, we're, 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 we're safe. Why are you attacking? Hello? I've got Hogak in graveyard. Hello? I think opponents just thrown the game... Because if they drew Hearse there and we keep missing on hitting a Cabal Therapy, 
Um, they, we are not in a great spot. We're slow, Dredgen. And we win. Please stop freaking out. Nice. 4 1. I think if we played differently in that painter match and I maybe thought about it a bit longer, I think. Two mana up, no play on turn two. Not an especially good play on turn one. I think they play Grindstone, which isn't a terrible play turn one, but it's not the best play if they don't have um, Painter. Like, if you don't have Painter, playing Grindstone turn one is probably, like, not what you want to do. Like, you'd probably rather either hold up a Red Elemental Blast or... Um, play a goblin welder or something so maybe i should have read from that the fact that they were in turn one grindstone that they were sort of hinging on going turn three khan encrypting me in which case maybe we could have won that game um and then we could have potentially got a 5-0 though maybe if we run the fourth round our fifth match wouldn't have been merfolk um we might have actually played against the real deck um but still i'm quite happy with that that's actually the best record i managed to put out with this list i've played this through five leagues and every one has been a 3-2 or a 2-3 with the exception of this one which I got a 4-1 it was a pretty clean 4-1 as well um, as I said I'm not the best player against Painter um, yeah alright you've joined me at the end of the league you want to hear my actual thoughts on this list um, Let's get critical for a second. I don't think this list is bad by any means. I think you can definitely win um, games with it. Uh, and I think in control matchups, it might even have a slight edge over the Lion's Eye Diamond list. Being able to sculpt your draws with Gaze. Gaze is an incredibly powerful enabler. Maybe people will realize that you just don't counter the Gaze. Um... Whereas Lion's Eye Diamond's a must counter, Gaze maybe isn't, so that's kind of weaker. You're, um, but overall, across all matchups, I do not think this list is better than the list with Lion's Eye Diamond. I am sorry to tell everybody, hoping that this is now an optimal list that doesn't use. Um, reserved list cards um what can i say um lion's eye diamond is without a doubt in every single hand in every single matchup probably your best card to draw whenever you don't have lion's eye diamond it's probably your best top deck and when you do have Lion's Eye Diamond, it makes other cards in your deck your best top deck. Because it enables the other cards, if you get me. Like, for example, imagine you mull to, I don't know, three. You keep a land that's, hand that's like Land, Grave Troll, Lion's Eye Diamond. Suddenly Faithless Looting's an amazing top deck. If you didn't have a Lion's Eye Diamond, it would not be a very good top deck. I mean, sure, if it was a careful study instead of a Lion's Eye Diamond, it would be not awful. You could careful study and hope to try and draw into uh, the Faithless Looting, and then you could do stuff, but you won't have the same explosiveness that you have. Um, obviously you're kind of compensating here by having force of wills in the board um, if you are going to play this list um, you could play it without the forces but then you'd be playing a non-optimal version of a non-optimal list so you're sort of hitting yourself twice um, 
I'm aware Force of Worlds cost a fair amount in paper at the moment. They have they go up and down a little bit, but um, to me, the real draw of this list is actually having access to Force in the board. Uh, you could maybe try and shoehorn it into a standard LED list. Uh, I don't think it would be impossible. People have tried it before. Obviously, uh, LED has basically no synergy with the card Force of Will. Um, I think Grief is a great card. Uh, I've been messing with Grief in the standard LED dredge lists, um, and I think it could even be the way to be playing the deck right now. Uh, it's a little hard to fit in the four copies of Grief uh, in the standard list, but I mean, this list uh, is making concessions I would not like to make to fit in the four copies of Grief. Um, let's start at what I dislike with the mana base. Fiery Islet, I think, is a worthless card. Uh, I don't think it does anything. I I mean, we played it, we drew it. We Did we ever once... Um, did we ever once want to cycle it? I don't believe we did. Um, the only use I see for this card is catching out people uh, who uh, don't realise when they try and surgical your dredges. And I say catch them out when they don't realize because uh, a lot of the time if they just do it in their end step rather than your upkeep, you won't have the mana to, to blank the surgical. Um, sure, there are situations where you will, but um, Fiery Islet is actually definitely a card that gets better when you have Lion's Eye Diamond in the deck. Because having Lion's Eye Diamond in the deck with Fiery Islet opens up a whole class of hands that you otherwise couldn't keep that are Fiery Islet plus Cephalid Colosseum with a Lion's Eye Diamond. Because you can go turn one Lion's Eye Diamond, it doesn't get countered, hopefully, follow up with Fiery Islet, doesn't get wastelanded next turn play cephalid Colosseum. then you can crack the lion's eye diamond for blue set fiery islet cephalid Colosseum. it's awesome you, you basically uh, they have to counter the led it forces them to counter the led or they just lose you never cast another spell that 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 makes you go off that can be countered um it's all lands based um it's super nice but in here we don't have access to that um you, you also can't do the thing where you can go have a hand that's got ox plus islet plus LED and you can islet into a ox and then have just about enough creatures in your graveyard to escape the ox, um, cracking the lion's eye diamond for red. You can't do that. Um, I don't see why you'd ever want to escape it. I'm sorry, you'd ever want to cycle it when you have access to gaze at two mana and ox which I also think is a pretty medium card, but I'll get to that later. I don't see why you'd ever want to use Fiery Islet when you've got access to Gaze at 2 mana anyway, uh, and that can potentially even find you a third mana to, us to use Faithless Looting. I don't see why you'd want to ever lose a land in this build voluntarily, except for Cephalid Colosseum, because obviously it's such a powerful card uh, for what you put into it. Like... Um, Cephalic Colosseum is miles better than Fiery Islet. Getting an extra dredge for, for two mana is, is awful. You would definitely rather have the land in play. Um, these 16 are fine. Uh, these 16 are fine. As I say, looting's obviously actually hilariously the weakest one in this list. Um, obviously you play the full four Narcomibas. No one's questioning that. Three Golgari Thugs. I think you can just about get away with this because of otherworldly gaze, but I would not want to do this. Like, I feel like... Um, oh, sorry. The, the, another thing I forgot to mention on the mana base. This, this is probably the most critical thing. I do not think 13 mana sources is enough. If I was playing this deck seriously, I want to find space for 14 at the very least, 15... Uh, ideally, because in LED Dredge, you can keep one land hands with Lion's Eye Diamond and win easily. With this deck, you can't keep one land hands and win easily. You need to find the second land a lot of the time, because you don't have the play of just go, Lion's Eye Diamond, land, 
crack Lion's Eye Diamond just go off. You don't care if they wasteland you at that point. With this with this deck, you do. You always do because if you cast turn one. Mana Confluence, Careful Study, you don't find that second land, they wasteland you, you've got nothing, you've got nothing, you can't even, you can't even have drawn into a Lion's Eye Diamond, and then potentially like just dredge into the Faith of Looting and cast the Lion's Eye Diamond and flash back the looting, you don't have access to that. I'd want to have at least, bare minimum, 14 mana sources. There is not a single deck in the format that gets away with playing 13 mana sources. Um, Lion's Eye Diamond is 100% a mana source in the standard dredge list. Um, 13 is too low. Even Black Red Reanimator plays 14 lands. And that deck also has four Lotus Petals and four Dark Rituals. You will lose more games long term, like across a, a, a long tournament from having to mull hands from simply not having enough lands in, um, than than you will win. I've, I mean, there are there are calculators that people have computed that will let you try and calculate what the optimal number of lands is. I've not plugged this list into that. There's the, it requires some programming to do that. Um, I did that with the standard Lion's Eye Diamond list, and it came back that you needed about... that The sweet spot was somewhere between, I believe, 12 and 13 lands. I think, I think, I think yeah, it was something between 12 and 13 lands, but obviously that calculator doesn't account for the fact that Wasteland exists in the format, and you can get Wastelanded. So, uh, while in an optimal what is the most keepable hands you will keep the most hands when you've got 12 to 13 lands you would ideally have more lands than 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 what the than what the uh optimal according to okay just run them 10,000 opening hands and see which ones are actually keepable you would you would prefer to err on the side of having more lands than less and you definitely need to go up lands, I think. That that would be the first change I'd make to this deck, would be try and find space for a 14th mana source. Cut the Fiery Islet, it doesn't cast Wismare, it doesn't cast Cabal Therapy, you never want to use it. Um, Golgari Thug, uh, ideally you want to go up to 4, but as I said, if you're trying to find space for a 14th, 15th land, um, y you, you will need to make some concessions i think you could just about get away with 11 dredges in this list um stink we didn't bridge from below fine three icarids uh i would prefer to cut the ox or move the ox to the sideboard if you really still want to play it i think it does have value versus containment priest and in the blue matchups um as like a threat that's like a creature that comes in and helps beat surgical and also helps dodge fluster and is just like something that they have to answer every turn for two mana um i think ox is a valuable card but i don't think it's pulling its weight in the main deck um it, it was often a card i just wanted to cut from the main deck honestly and i don't think it's I don't think it's a good enough hand card, another good enough card in your opening hand. Um, the four griefs I think are nice. I like grief in this list. Maybe you could trim to three, but I think having four griefs is one of the draws to this. I think you, when you give up the lion's eye diamonds, you need to have some interaction on turn one, um, and grief does that. Uh, there, there isn't a combo deck in the format that 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 can't kill on turn one or put up some interaction on turn one with the exception of i guess elves um are there any others no i think i think elves is the only one and i mean elves is a bit of a weird deck it's kind of a value deck as well as a combo deck um four grave troll yeah obviously hogak yeah obviously three breakthrough i actually think breakthrough is good in this list uh it does have some dissynergy with force of will but you need the velocity sideboard um ley line of sanctity is fine i think you have to respect endurance uh one chain of vapors fine um three forces are fine uh three 
ley lines are fine. Dread Return Ashen Rider, I could almost see tr cutting Dread Return Ashen Rider. I know that sounds nuts, but maybe you could just lean more heavily onto the forces, but there's nothing that I'm like, oh yeah, this card's totally missing from the sideboard. So there's nothing, apart from messing with the ley line answers, which really is just a lot of personal preference. As I said, I prefer Nature's Claim right now. Um, I think the sideboard's actually really solid. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense to have the Grief's main deck and the forces in the board. Um, but critically speaking, do I think this is going to replace the Lion's Eye Diamond list? No. Can you play this? In events a win yes 100% I mean I think that's been proven um, for the people without lion's eye diamonds this is this is good this is a good list if you want to play dredge and go to a tournament you can win you can win will you be playing a suboptimal list in my view personally yes but the creator of this deck probably disagrees with me and that's fine uh, uh, this this is my personal opinion um, but you can win. You can win events. I mean, you can win events going to a tournament and playing Black Red Reanimator with with Blood Crypts instead of Badlands. Like you can do that. You can easily win. You could you could easily win an event playing Black Red Reanimator with with Shocks instead of Jewels. Um, so yeah, I think and I think this is a closer call on whether this is suboptimal versus. I think it's more obvious that playing Black Red Reanimator with, with with shocks instead of jewels is wrong compared to playing this. So, yeah. But 100%, I think this list needs at least another land. Um, yeah, and I, and I really would like to have four Icarids because I feel like the velocity is a bit slower, so it would be nice to have a fourth Icarid. Um, rant over. That's my rant over. Um... Thank you all for watching. I think we got some very good games. I hope I demonstrated how to play this deck, albeit not perfectly. Um, I don't claim to be the the world's greatest dredge player. Um, I'm definitely not. However, uh, hopefully I've managed to use some of my experience from uh, playing Lion's Eye Diamond Dredge to, to show what you should be thinking about when you're playing this list, um, having played a few leagues with it. And uh, thank you all for watching. Feel free to do the YouTube algorithm stuff if that sort of gets you uh, going. And, um, yeah, goodbye. I'm going to sign off.